decide to be an immigrant to the United States. And um, just like a regular immigrant, I came. Actually, I was not an immigrant. I was. Uh, I came here with a tourist visa. I was an illegal alien after six months. And um, after uh, being an illegal alien between 89 and 94, I hit the green card lottery in 94, and I became a resident in this country. But meanwhile, back then when I came here, life was much easier, and it was the land of opportunities. I was able to obtain a social security card, uh, my driver's license, I was able to open a bank account, so I was treated like an American citizen. I was able to open up my own business after two or three years. I came just like an illegal alien. I pumped gas for the first year. Second year, I was extremely lucky to find a job in a bookstore, which I was not very good student, but I had the chance uh, in the bookstore to read about 4,000 books in one year. They were all comic books, Superman and Batman, and I have a great collection of it. And um, <coughs> so after working at the uh, bookstore, uh, my boss was a Turkish guy, and his brother, older brother, was a jeweler. And um, because of my high school, I you know, spoke English, so he asked me to help him out at the weekends at his jewelry store. I said, okay. So I went to a Woodbridge Jewelry Exchange to his uh, jewelry store uh, for about two, three months to help him out at the weekends as I was working at the bookstore. Then um, he basically forced me to open up my own store. And uh, with no money, basically, with some credit, about $10,000, $20,000 credit, I opened up my first retail store. And um, I was good at sales. I was a person's person. So I was successful in my first couple of years. Then I had a chance to um, open up a bigger store in the same place. And um, in 1991, 1993, I um, was extremely lucky. The largest jewelry store in the jewelry exchange in Woodbridge was for sale. And it was owned by two Persian guys, and which were they were very successful, and they started a great business. And they put their store up for sale in 1993, and um, you know I had no money. I had maybe twenty thousand dollars, twenty-five thousand dollars in my name. I was asking for half a million dollars for a store. So everybody was going and making them offers: three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand. They were giving them seventy-five cents on a dollar. I went up to the guy. His name was Maurice, and I said, Maurice, I said I'd like to buy your store, but I have no money. But I promise you I'll pay you half a million dollars, whatever you're asking for, if you give me time. I said, if you're telling me you're doing so much business, and I'll be able to you know, maintain the same amount of business, if I maintain it, I'll be able to pay you in about a year and a half, two years, what I owe you. And um, he, he was a Jewish guy from, uh, from uh, Iran, and uh, he says, Mel, I, I grew up with uh, Muslim guys in Iran. And he says, all my friends were Muslim. He says, I do trust Muslim people. And he says, I'll give, my, I'll give you my store. And he says, I, I accept your offer. I said, I have nothing but a handshake that I can give you. I cannot sign a paper because I got nothing under my name. So we shook hands. And in 1993, being the smallest guy in the jewelry exchange, in a very small store, all of a sudden I became the largest jeweler in the Ruby Jewelry Exchange. I had like 10, 12 uh, people working for me. Uh, business was great. And um, so that's how my real jewelry business life starts. And uh, I always had an interest. Uh, in manufacturing, I always had an interest in uh, you know creating some you know uh, nice stuff. Even if it was a piece of wood, I like to play with that wood and you know make some stuff out of it. Anyway, so um, I start creating some nice piece of jewelry and.